The perimeter of a rectangle is 59 over 15 centimeters. Perimeter. Come on, pencil. Perimeter is equal to 59 over 15. Uh, who comes up with these numbers, really? And its area is equal to 14 over 15. And we want to find the length and the width of the rectangle. So let's write equations for each of these uh, quantities. The perimeter should be, it takes two lengths plus two widths. And for the area, it's length times width. So what we've just made here is a system of equations. And how do you solve a system of equations? At this level, we've got three options. We've got our graphing. We've got substitution. And we've got elimination. What's going to be best for this particular problem? Well, I'm going to get rid of elimination right off the bat here. And the reason why is because elimination works best best with uh, linear equations. And we've got that for the first one for the perimeter. But the area equation, since it's length multiplied times width, it's a type of quadratic equation. And that doesn't work very well here unless you had another quadratic that you could eliminate some term with. Okay, so then that leaves us with graphing and uh, substitution. If we chose to do the graphing, we could. What we would have to do is we would say, hey, we're going to let x equal the length, we're going to let y equal the width, rewrite the equations, and then you'd have to solve them for y so that you could put them into the graphing calculator to see where they intersect. You could do it, but we're not going to. Instead, we're going to do this by substitution. We're going to pick one of these variables to solve for and substitute it back into the other equation. All right? Obviously, there's just not enough room to do this here, so... Uh, I just happen to have this a little further down here. Okay. So, as I mentioned, we're going to solve this one by substitution. To do that, i got to pick one of these variables to solve for, either the w or the length. Now, if we look at the area equation, it looks way simpler. And you might be tempted to solve this for length or width. So let's see what happens when we do. Let's say we're going to solve that for the length. If I'm going to solve this for length, I have to get rid of the w. That's being multiplied times the length. So I have to divide it over. So the length should be equal to 14 over 15. And then divided by w. All right. So we have definitely complicated this because we have a complex fraction. We got a fraction inside of a fraction. We could fix it. However, then you'd have to take this and substitute it into the previous equation, the one for perimeter. And then you just put a W down here in the bottom, which is definitely going to make this a little tougher. So let's pretend like this didn't ever, ever happen. Get rid of it. And instead, Let's come back up here to the perimeter equation and solve that one for length or for width. It doesn't matter. You pick it. Okay, so when, when I recopy this down, I'm going to notice that both of the length and the widths, they have a 2 in front of it, which I should probably get rid of. 59 over 15 is equal to 2 lengths plus 2 widths. To get rid of that 2 in front of the length and the width, I could divide both sides by 2. But since I've got a fraction over here on the left-hand side, I'm going to instead multiply by the reciprocal. I'm going to multiply by a half. And that's going to get rid of our 2s on the left-hand side, make our equation just a little bit simpler. And then multiplying on the left with these two fractions, 59 times 1, and then 2 times 15. Now, uh, I think that we said that we're going to solve this for the length, so I just have to subtract over the width. So 59 over 30 minus the width is equal to the length. Now I have an expression that I could 
substitute in for the length in the other equation. Don't substitute it back into the same equation, then you're just gonna go round and around in a loop. So I gotta go back to my area equation, and I'm gonna take the L out, and I'm gonna replace it with 59 over 30 minus the, minus the, the width. So 14 over 15 is equal to 59 over 30 minus W times W. Okay, and now I need to solve this thing for W. I'm gonna suggest that we distribute the W that's on the outside to both, both of the terms that are in the parentheses. 14 over 15 is equal to 59 over 30 W minus W squared. And now you can see that we've got ourselves a quadratic equation. So it was both a system of equations, which turned into a quadratic equation. And now, how do I solve quadratic equations? So for quadratic equations, we've got, we could graph the thing, just like for substitution, that was one of the methods that we could use. Um, we could use the quadratic formula. which, if you have forgotten, is x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And you'd have to get this into a form where you could use that formula, and uh, one of them would have to be your x-coordinate, which would obviously be w since that's your only variable in there. Um, and then your other option is factoring. And this is the one that we're going to choose to use so we can get a little bit of extra practice on the factoring. Most of the equations that I'm going to give you, if they're quadratic, turn out to be factorable. And it is definitely a skill that I want you to work on. So if I'm going to choose to do factoring, I need to get this thing to be equal to zero. And then uh, it's so much easier to factor if you didn't have all these fractions that are in here. So I've got... 14 over 15, I've got 59 over 30. Both of these are making this problem harder than it needs to be. So the tip is to multiply both sides of this thing by the common denominator. Now, my text over here is getting in the way, so let me move it. That should do it. Okay. Um, so the common denominator here between 15 and 30 is 30. So when I multiply everything in this equation by 30, it's going to get rid of all of our fractions. So just off to the side here, if I have 30, then I'm going to multiply times 14 over 15. Imagine that being over 1. And then we could, we could cancel out a common factor of 15 here, leaving it 2. This leaves a 1 down in the bottom, and that would give me 28. So I've got 28 over here on the left hand side is equal to, and then whenever you multiply the 59 over 30 by 30, the denominators are just going to cancel and give you 59 w's minus, and then don't forget that the w squared also gets multiplied by 30. Okay, so quadratic equations, as I mentioned, they need to be equal to zero, and it's to your advantage to make sure that your leading coefficient, which in this case is the 30w squared, needs to be positive. So I'm going to suggest that we add that over here to the left-hand sign. So I've got 30w squared. I'll have to subtract the 59w's minus 59w. And then the 28 is already on that side, so it's a positive 28 is equal to 0. So here is this lovely quadratic equation that we're going to have to try to simplify. We're going to have to try to factor that thing. So to factor it, there are many, many methods for factoring. I'm going to do some guessing and checking. Okay, so when I go to factor, factoring is this process of foiling backwards. And when I multiply this first term times this first term, I should get... Uh, 30w squared. 
And now there's uh, quite a few things that we could multiply to get 30w squared. It's possible it could be 30w and w. It could be, uh, let's say, 15w and 2w's, or it could be 5w and 6w. Who knows which one it is? We'll have to figure that out in a moment. Um, let's see. For the second ones here, actually, let me change it to blue. For the last terms, whenever we multiply these last terms together, we should get 28. So for a 28 product, we've got options like, let's see, of course, 28 and 1. What else goes into 28? We've got 2 and 14, and we've got 4 and 7, and is that about it, I think? All right, so now I need to pair these things up, and notice that we've got to get a negative 59 here, right here in the middle. That negative 59... It's quite, quite large. And notice that we've got, uh, for our factors of 28, it's a positive number. So it's a positive number. They're both going to have the same sign. And that's got to be negative. So we could get a negative 59 for the middle. And uh, they're going to have to add up to that negative 59. So let me just try something. And let's see what might work. Let's say that I choose the 5w together with a 6w here. So that's going to give me my 30w squared for the first one. And I don't have a very good feeling about the 28 and the 1. So maybe I try, let's try this 4 and 7. Let's see how close we're going to go. If we choose 4 and 7, the 4 can't go right here. And the reason why it can't go right there, because it'd be paired up with a 6, which has a common factor of 2 in it. If this term has a common factor of two, that means the original quadratic equation has a common factor of two. And you can see that's just not true. So let's back this thing up. And instead, if we're gonna use a four, let's put it right here. Now let's see how this thing works out by foiling it. If I multiply the uh, 5w times seven, I would get 35w's. If I multiply the 4 times the 6, I'd have 24w's. So 24w's together with 35w's makes 59w. Oh my gosh, we just totally lucked out. And of course, the signs have to be both negative. Now, there are some other tricks and uh, to figuring out what your factors are. One of those might be when your numbers get large like these do is to make a factor tree so that you can figure out what could possibly go in that number and how I can rearrange and choose those different factors. Now this problem is not quite finished. What we've done is we've just factored it. We got it equal to zero so that we can apply the zero product property which says that if I have two things that multiply together to get zero at least one of them has to be zero. Maybe it's the first factor here. Maybe it's 5w minus 4 is equal to 0. Add the 4 over. 5w is equal to 4. Divide by 5. w is equal to 4 fifths. All right. Or maybe it's the second one. Maybe it is 6w minus 7 is equal to 0. Add the 7 over. So 6w is equal to 7. And then divide both, by, both sides by 6. So w is equal to 7, 6. So I have two possible answers, and we need to consider both of them. So let's say, for example, that we chose this first one, that w is equal to 4 fifths. So let's go back to one of our equations here, and uh, namely this one, and then check to see what the the length is supposed to be if this is the width. So I'd have 59 over 30 minus 4 fifths is supposed to be equal to the length. If I subtract these, I need a common denominator. In order to get a common denominator here, that's going to be 30 because 5 goes into 30. I just have to multiply both the top and the bottom by 6. So times 6 times 6. And then I've got... 
59 over 30 minus 24 over 30. is equal to my length. When I subtract that, I think that I get 35 over 30, which reduces, because we got a common factor on the top and the bottom, when I divide out my common factor of 5, up top I'd have 7, and on the bottom I'd have 6. Wait a minute, that number looks familiar. Notice that that's the other one that's right here. Okay, that's pretty interesting. So if these things work out, then that means that, hey, my width is four fifths, my length is seven six, or if I switch those things around, it still works out. Let's check it just to be sure in our area equation right up here. Let's multiply them both together and make sure that we get 14 over 15 for the area. So my area is supposed to be my length times my width. And if we said that the length was seven over six, and we say the width is five, uh, whoops, hey, four over five, and multiply those things together, I do have a common factor that we can go ahead and cancel before we multiply on the top and the bottom. Shares a common factor of two common factor of 2, that would give us a 3. And multiply these things straight across, I get 14 on the top, and I'd get 3 times 5, 15. And I do believe that does check out. Yes, very satisfying. So we've got my length is equal to 7 over 6. I think this is in inches. I'm going to have to scroll all the way back up here. No, it is not. It's in centimeters. No worries. Centimeters. And my width is equal to four fifths centimeters. However, those two things can be switched because back up here when we solved the quadratic, we also got the width to be seven six. And if I switch those things around by this equation, I would just get that four fifths for the length. So my other possible answer is that my length is four fifths centimeters and my width is seven six centimeters. There you go, all done.